Hello, my Facebook girlfriends. Ah, what a moment we are in. This is not an easy cycle. I'm Donna Hoffman. Let me just tell you who I am in case you're new to me. I'm Donna Hoffman and they call me the interior design advocate because I help to advocate on behalf of design lovers everywhere across the country and beyond to help you turn around your results if you're not happy with the way your home is looking and I run a luxury interior design company here in the United States in the Philadelphia region and in addition to that um, I also have a brand called the interior design advocate where I put together online courses to help empower design lovers working on your own home and every week on Tuesday afternoon at 4 p.m. we always stop what we're doing here at our luxury design company to be able to come out and talk to you about what's going on in your design life and you know we really stopped and thought you know what do we do with our Facebook lives right now given the moment that we're in right now this difficult cycle and it just felt as if it would be disingenuous to come out here with you now and not address what's happening in our lives and in your life um, so if we end up talking about design, if you want me to, if that will be a relief to you, if that will be enjoyable to you, I will gladly do that for you. But I have to start out, because you are important to me, you're my Design Diva community, I really wanted to start out talking to you about what's going on right now and how to help keep yourself as intact as possible. Now, certainly, I want you to be safe and healthy, you and your families, right? That, that goes without saying. But I want to talk to you too about what it is when you're faced with a stressful moment of getting hellos and waves from people. I, I felt that I had to talk to you about what it is to keep yourself intact, even through these deeply stressful times, any stressful time. And you know, whenever something stressful happens, some new cycle, some new moment lands in your lap, and, and the moment that it lands, it always feels as if it's never going to leave. It feels like this is your new normal. And the first thing I want to remind you about, and I am not being Pollyanna here, I want to remind you that every cycle, no matter how difficult and dark, every moment, no matter how difficult and dark, it eventually changes, it eventually leaves. If you lived through the tragedy of 9-11, if you lived through the, the crash after 9-11, people thought that was never going to leave, they thought that was the new normal. The human brain, the human spirit is resilient and collectively, we all moved forward. We did. There was this fantastic uh, special, I think it was an HBO special, where they interviewed septuagenarians. I think that's what it's called when you're 100 years old or, or more. Um, and these are people who lived through the Great Depression, where men in, were, were jumping off of buildings and committing suicide, jumping off of bridges because they felt so hopeless and so helpless. Terrible combination, hopeless and helpless. And, and the interviewer was saying to these people who had lived through that and, and went on to you know, live through, oh, I can't believe my nose is itchy. I will definitely use wipes after itching, itching my nose. Um, these people lived through terrible times and they survived it and and their peers didn't and the interviewer said why is it that you lived through that so well and how did you get through it and they all said the same thing their answer was the same i knew it was bad when it was happening i knew it wasn't pleasant but i always knew that it was going to change i always knew things were going to get back to a new normal and so i just want to remind you of that as you take precaution as you keep yourself and your family, and your friends, and your community safe, yourself safe, healthy. I also want you to keep your eye on another pathogen that's out there, not just this virus, but there is this kind of energetic pathogen, and it's called panic. And it's very hard to be around that and not let it get inside. And if you're one of my design divas, chances are you are either a highly sensitive person or you're a, an empath, meaning you feel things very deeply. So you definitely feel the current of the moment. It's important to know that about yourself because if you do know that about yourself, you know how important it is for you to stop, pull back, and refuel and recalibrate to keep yourself whole and intact because that is what you want to infect and affect the world around you with, a sense of calm, a sense of centered, calm knowing this is going to pass. 
so that you're a bit of a beacon, right? A beacon of light, a beacon of, of, of calm and of comfort. If you're having a hard time getting yourself to feel comfortable, and if you're just joining us, you'll see in the, in the introduction that I wrote up, if you still want me to talk about design, I will. But I had to address for you, my, my beautiful girlfriends, my beautiful design divas, I had to address this great strain I know you are all under, that we are all under. It would feel very disingenuous for me to just start talking about design without addressing this first. And if once we talk about this, and I hear what's on your mind, if you still want me to talk about design, Katie and I will hang in. I will talk about design. If that will make you feel good, I will do that. But we're talking about now what, what you can do during stressful times to stay intact, to keep your, your energy centered and whole so that you're not depleted, so that you can show up for yourself, show up for your family, show up for your friends, show up for your community. Even though we're all social distancing, you can do it with a text, an email, a phone call. First of all, there are some great things that you can do that require no money and it requires a pen and a pad or if you're a computer typer you may have heard of something called the morning pages I don't mean morning as in you know grieving after someone died I mean morning as in the morning the a.m. time of day a hundred years ago before I was uh, a licensed uh, or rather a, a trained and practiced designer I became a licensed um, a hypnotherapist I had a whole non-compete clause going on with, with a TV station I had left, so I didn't know what to do with myself. And when I learned to do hypnotherapy to help people stop smoking or lose weight or whatever, um, one of the things we learned about was what happens when you come out of a sleep state. And when you do the different stages of consciousness, as the brain waves start to speed up into being totally alert and awake, one of those phases you pass through when you come out of sleep is a phase where the emotions are very... Um, present, which is perhaps why you've maybe recognized if you've been in a tough time in your life, in the morning when you wake up, that sadness is right there, easily accessible. It's because you have come through this very deeply relaxed state where the emotional life is very accessible. So the morning pages is something I did not make up. Uh, it's something I believe that the author of The Artist's Way made up. And the idea of the morning pages is that when you are upset, in the morning, you just take a pad of paper and you just write, 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 write everything that's on your mind, everything that's pressing on your heart, every worry, everything that you're thinking, you just get it out on a piece of paper. You write and you write and you write. Might fit, you might fill up a whole page, two pages of a journal, three pages, whatever it is. But here's the spin that I want you to put on it that I find is massively effective to help get yourself centered. And you can do this at night too if you can't sleep. If you're just tossing and turning, get out of bed, get out the journal, start writing. Just pour onto the page everything that needs to get out of you, all of your worries, all of your concerns. But once you feel empty, like you've just finished it, and perhaps you're crying the whole time you're doing it, that's okay. But when you're done, I want, when I want you to just draw a line across your page. I do a squiggle line, like a little pretty line. And then I want you to write the words, ah, uh, peace and breathe. And I want you to take a deep breath. And, and, and after you do that, ah, uh, peace, breathe, take a breath, write that line. Then I want you to continue writing, but now I want you to answer yourself. From some future version of you, I want you to write and counsel yourself. Answer yourself. What would you say to someone like you, feeling what you're feeling in that moment? Talk sense to them. Talk wisdom to them. It's an amazingly powerful tool that you can use. So try that the next time the stress of what we're going, going through is just getting to be intense for you. Or learn to walk away from the news feed a little bit when you just need to take a breath, regroup, or walk away from social media just for a bit so you can regroup. Because here's the thing you need to know, stress begets more stress. So if we're already in this stressful moment, why do you want to do more things that will add stress to the initial stressor? So find those things that can calm and still you, your center, your heart, hopefully you can infuse that into, into the world, to your friends, your family, your community, through social distancing, I, I grant you, uh, emails, Facebooking, uh, uh, texting them, Skyping with them, phoning, telephoning them, but keeping yourself intact. And something else you can do for a small fee, um, try downloading an app, the Calm app, C-A-L-M, great app, or the Breathe app app great app both of these apps 
can take you through different guided visualizations, meditations, just to help you get back to sleep, just to help you get into a peaceful state, okay? So as I said earlier, it's not just this virus. I want you to be very careful about catching. I want none of you to catch it, but I want you to be careful about the panic that is out there and the rhetoric that's out there. And the last thing I will say to you before I see what's on your mind, I remember after the 9-11 moment happened and, and, and the terrible financial crash that happened, there was a psychologist on one of the morning shows and he was saying that human nature is such that we all tend to underreact to good news and we all tend to overreact to bad news. I am not negating the severity of the, the state that we're in right now, but I am saying per this authority, this expert that we all tend to as human beings, we are programmed to overreact to bad news, underreact to good news. So if that is the case, that we are programmed to look at what is it that can kill us, right? What, what tiger is chasing us? What dinosaur is about to eat us? That's in your DNA. So you have to know if you start feeling your motor is revving because you're getting really tense about the latest economic report and how much longer is this going to go on and why is there no toilet paper at my food store and why are people hoarding water? Why are they hoarding water? They should not be hoarding water. If you start to feel your motor rev revving like that, step back. See what devices you can use to just cleanse that out of you, find your center again, and remind yourself it's normal to feel caught up in this panic rhetoric if that's where you're hanging out. So make sure you're taking care of your beautiful selves, your beautiful hearts, your beautiful spirits, my girlfriends, and you make sure you're doing things that will keep you whole and intact. So that said, I want to see what's on your mind. If you still want me to talk about window treatments, I will. If you just want to put a pin on it right now because you just feel like I'm exhausted, I can't do anything further, that's fine too. So let me see what's on your mind. If you want me to do some teaching about window treatments, which is what I was going to do today, I'm happy to do that. Boy, these are dirty glasses. Holy smokes. Katie's way back there. We've been practicing social distancing. Some of our team has not come in and that is fine as well. Okay. All righty, my lovelies. Let's see here. So Mary is saying, Donna, thank you for acknowledging the mood of the country. You're such a graceful woman. Mary, you are important to me. Every person in my community is important to me. You fill my hearts every single week. I want to do what's, what's, what's right for you and what's best for you. And so thank you for that. We, we really struggled. Do we, do we cancel? Look at this. Looks like I'm falling apart here. Do we cancel today? But I didn't want to not see you. So thanks, Mary. I appreciate that. Look at that, I'm making you a mayor. It's my New Yorker popping out. We shorten everything. I had a friend growing up, his name is Ira. We called him I. New Yorkers shorten names. That's why my family calls me Don. Jennifer is saying, I am so glad you did this today. You, I needed this today. Everyone, please stay, stay safe. Thank you, Jen, my love. Mwah to you, and I, I, I second that. Helen is saying, first time watching live, usually at work, praying for everyone. God bless. Helen, thank you. Blessings right back out to you. And by the way, Insta, love and hugs to you too. Uh, my vision isn't good enough for me to see what you're saying. Oh, uh, oh, but hum decor, love, life, love is saying, love you, girly. I love you back. If you have anything, Katie will, Katie will have, I don't know how Katie's going to get me the message. She can send it to me because we're social distancing. She's way back there. Hey, Katie, she can send me like a little she can bean me with a, a paper airplane. Karen, lovely Karen is saying, continuous stress and worry weakens the immune system. Yes, Karen, you are correct. That is why um, often after people lose a loved one, very often um, you find that people get sick, they get the flu, they get a cold. Absolutely. Um, I used to teach a course 100 billion years ago in another life practically uh, that was um, a, a goal setting and a motivating um, course in corporate America to help keep, keep people feeling good in life. And we did this exercise with the dowser. I actually showed people what happened to your natural energy field when you got depressed. Your natural energy field actually starts to shrink. Everything starts to shut down. So stress is so bad for you on so many levels, all that cortisol going into your body. Um, so Karen is saying, help stop the hysteria, apply common sense at this time, less than 0.0001% are going to die from this flu. Last year, 30,000 people died from the regular flu. Um, the media is, is owns this panic. Don't fan the flames. All right, Karen is calling for calm heads. Um, 
I don't disagree with the, the needing to be calm and not buying into the hysteria. Thank you so much for doing this, Dora is saying. God bless everyone. Thank you, Dora. Blessings back to you. Jacqueline is saying, stay safe and healthy in this season. Agree, Jackie, to you too. Sandra is saying, appreciating your words of guidance during this challenging time. Absolutely, Sandra. Uh, we're connected, all of us design divas, right? Through our love of beauty, our sensitivity to the way the world looks and feels. I got you. I got you right here. Jen is saying, especially think about our sweet children that are affecting by this and, and they don't understand the real issue. Vicki is saying, thank you. I'd love to hear some design nuggets. All right, Vicki wants some design nuggets. If you guys want design nuggets, send in a comment and just say nugget, design nugget. I'll know you, I'll know you want me to go on and do that. Jonah saying, I was fine until I went to Costco to pick up a prescription for my horse, not me. Joan, I've always wanted to learn to ride a horse. Oh, if I knew where you lived, Joan, I'd come visit you once we don't have to social distance. And one day, girls, we will not have to. This moment will pass. The only time I was on a horse, this thing kept trying to scrape me off on the side of a tree. Every time we passed a tree in the forest and I said to the instructor, hey, I think there's something wrong with my horse. He keeps walking too close to the tree. And he said, no, he knows you're an equestrian idiot and he's trying to scrape you off. So Joan, hopefully your horse wouldn't know how to do with an equestrian uh, limited person like me, but my heart was in the right place. So Joan is saying Julia Page, Julia Cameron did the morning pages. Ah, the artist's way. Thank you so much, Joan. Angela is saying empaths be strong and unite. Yay, Angela, I love you, girl. I'm with you. Um, okay, Sandra has said she's done the morning pages. Great technique. Linda's saying, peace, keep breathing. I agree with you. Ruth is saying, I have one of the apps I mentioned, the Calm app, but she missed the other one. The other one is called Breathe, B-R-E-E, B-R-E-E-T-H. B-R-E-A-T-H. -E -E. -E. Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. 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 I don't know how to spell it. I need a spell check. I'm a bright woman, but I don't spell. It's one of my, one of my flaws. Steve loves me anyway. Um, Joan is saying the good thing about getting older is that you learn that usually nothing is as bad as it seems and this too shall pass. You know, I, I, my friend Trish always says, Donna, no matter what happens in life, the grass still grows, the sun still comes up, so does the moon. You know, life keeps moving forward. And guys, that's what you have to have. Oh, you have to have to keep your, 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 your attention on that. And when it feels like it's too much, turn off the news, walk away, do something else just to kind of take a break and, and shift your energy. Ah, breathe this B-R-E-A-T-H-E. Thank you, Linda. Linda can spell, there it is. Uh, Rodney is saying, get outdoors in nature. I agree, Rodney and Libby, Libby White. Look at the sky, listen for the birds, pay attention to the greenery. So agree with you, get out into the garden. It's a great place to pray. Oh, that's what she's saying. Focus on the good, positive things in your life. Pray, be thankful for the good things, change your perspective. Isn't it amazing? That two months ago, three months ago, when a bad report about X, you know, the economy or a stock went down 200 points or whatever, or you heard some politician not getting political on whatever side of the aisle you are not, and you thought it was so terrible, it put such a damper on your day. I mean, wouldn't you just love to have that day back? Puts everything in perspective, right? So be great. I agree with you. Be grateful for what you have. We human beings are funny. We don't, we're not, we don't appreciate it until it's taken away. So, uh, Joan is saying working on window treatment seems like a great distraction right now. Okay, so Joan would like some window treatment action. Okay, Judith's saying teaching. Judy's saying window treatments, please. All right, all right, here we go. Marie's saying thank you for the love and concern. Yes, let's talk curtains. Linda's saying stick to your plan. All righty, so here it is. And Sherry's saying I have a beautiful spirit shining through my wonderful words. Thank you, Sherry, even though I can't spell. Thank you, Sherry. But she would love something else to think about. Good. Okay, so it's time for teaching. Okay, so let's do some teaching. All right, girls. I love my design divas. Wasn't it Eleanor Roosevelt said that the, um, the, the women are like tea bags? You know how strong they are when they're in hot water, something like that. I'm sure Anna, Eleanor said it a heck of a lot better than I just did. All right, window treatments. We were going to talk today about the difference and the trade-offs, the trade-offs and the trade-downs when you go from customs to semi-custom to off the rack. What are, what are semi-custom? That is a really big question that I get from you guys. So first, on one end of the spectrum is custom. Custom means you can have any treatment, any treatment style 
in virtually any fabric, period, end of story. There are no limits. You can have whatever you want, however you want. It'll cost you, but you can have it. That's in the custom world. You could go to any fabric manufacturer, Croce, Kravit, uh, Scalamandre, uh, uh, who am I leaving out? Durley, are they still in business? I don't know, Robert Allen, mm, they're having trouble. Uh, Stout. Carol Stout, right, you, any under the sun. Any one of those fabrics, you can turn it into a winter treatment. Custom world, no holds barred. Then there's the semi-custom world. So you got custom, then you have semi-custom. What's semi-custom? Semi-custom treatments would be something like, well, Hunter Douglas, right? So with Hunter Douglas, you have this, you can have this treatment style in these five different fabrics, right? Or how about the Smith & Noble catalog? You can have this treatment style in these 10 or 20 different fabrics that are available. So it's semi-custom. It has to be custom made to your particular window in those, in the case of semi-custom, as with custom. But with semi-custom, they're controlling how much choice you really have. Therefore, semi-custom, less choice, less money, right? Less cost involved. And then you have ready-mades. So you got ready-mades, semi-custom, custom. Ready-mades, custom. ready which is at the entry-level price point, means that this same treatment is banged out on a machine, most likely overseas, lower cost labor, lower skilled labor, less fabric, um, it may be one fabric or two fabrics. And this is it, where we make these curtains in this size, this width, this length, and we just bang it out, we shove it into a package and boom, you see it on the shelves of Bed Bath & Beyond or uh, I don't know, where else, uh, HomeSense or JCPenney or wherever. So, the, or, or Home Depot or Lowe's. So those lower cost items are made very quickly in a factory, just banging them out, hundreds of them, you know, uh, of an hour, I guess, perhaps even more. Whereas in a semi -custom, in a custom workroom, you are the only customer on that cutting table and all the people in that workroom, they're, they're patterning you, they're pinning you, they're sewing you. Your fabric has been ordered by your design team, all 30 yards of your gorgeous face fabric from wherever, right? Very Pindler or, or Scalamandre, very different than uh, you know a, a, a factory, hopefully not a sweatshop, but a factory overseas that's just banging out you know, round the clock, nonstop, or, you know, nine to six, people are just at these machines, just feeding these, these same treatments through. So when you have semi-custom, you have more flexibility. Custom, you have total flexibility. But when you have ready-mades, you have the least amount of flexibility. So if you need to work with ready-mades, what is the smartest way to do it? The trade down with ready-mades the trade up with ready mazes is that you save a lot of money, right? Not a lot of cost. The trade back down, very like almost no flexibility and must, much more limited selection. So the smartest thing to do if you are working with ready maids is I would make your, your window treatment decision very early in your project. Normally, I like to start a project with what's my rug, what's my inspiration fabric, but because with ready-made window coverings, you don't have a lot of choice, see what's out there first that you like that is in a color and fabric and style that would work for you, and then try to back your other decisions into that. So let's say you're doing a master bedroom, See what's out there first in your treatment style and type that you want, and then roll into your bedding rather than the other way around. There will be more choices in bedding than there will be in your window treatment options. Here is where ready-mades get really tricky and where semi-custom gets easier and custom gets super easy. And this is one of the reasons when I teach you about window treatments during a Facebook Live versus a, a workshop or my online course, Window Boss, it's why I can't go into deep, deep, uh, very deep concept because I need visuals to be able to teach you. The thing about window treatments, it's not about the one window. It's never about the one window. It's about the room of windows or the space of windows. Easiest room to do will be your bedroom because you probably have fairly simplistic windows in that bedroom. 
unless you live in a McMansion where you have, you know, a bay window and a couple of singles and maybe a triple and you need motorized, blah, blah, blah. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the standard bedroom that has two windows in it, two single windows. This is the easiest thing to do with ready-mades or semi-customs. It's not a complicated grouping of windows. It's when you're working an open concept on your first floor of your home and you have, you know, a slider plus a triple window plus a, a couple of singles and you need to kind of unify everything. That, because that's what window treatments do. They're the great unifier. And that is something I, I need to teach you with visuals so you know how to map out and plan your treatments. I don't sew. Those of you who know me know that I was lovingly kicked out of a sewing shop when I was a junior. No, not a junior. When I was, uh, I think, in my second year of graduate school. Um, they said, look, come back and have coffee with us and chit-chat, but just don't go near a sewing machine ever again. I don't like sewing. I stink at it. The needle going up and down makes me nervous. So I don't sew window treatments. I know enough about their fabrication to be dangerous, and I know enough about them so that when I design them as a designer in, in the luxury world where I work, I know what I'm talking about, and I know how to talk to my workroom. I know how to select a piece of fabric that will work for treatment. But what you need to know is that when you are planning and selecting window treatments, it is never about the single window. That's why when people say, how should I treat my sliding glass door? I go, meh, this, this design diva is gorgeous and brilliant, but there's a ton she doesn't know about window treatment design because she's asking me the wrong question. It's not how do I treat my slider? What do I do with my sliding glass door in conjunction with everything else that's around it? In my design style, in my room, with my color palette, and with my budget? That's the question. How do you treat a slider? with anything you want that won't interrupt the slide that that kind of eliminates a lot right there no no shades no shutters no blinds right that's hello that's that that's that's so what to do with your slider is so easy but it really is not about just your slider it's about everything around so with with ready maze where it gets tricky is that the more you need to customize the different the differences between the different windows that's where ready maids can be tricky so what you can do is split the difference, do a little bit of semi-custom and a little bit of, of, um, of, of, of off the rack. And something I teach inside of my Window Boss course is how to cheat with ready mates. And there are cheaters that you can do. But again, I need visuals and there's some mathematical formulas you need. And trust me, I don't love math. But these formulas are easy enough that show you how to cheat the proportion and what to do to beef up uh, ready maze as well. I've got a great blog that I've posted for you. Doesn't cost any money to read a blog. I figured right now people are probably not wanting to spend right now. So great blog that we posted a link for you about how to pick out window treatments in your home. If you want to check out my online course, go to the Learn With Me tab at The Interior Design Advocate. Take a look at the window boss. It's pretty Flippin' phenomenal. Design divas are loving it. And if you like it, go to the blog where you'll find a, 20, a current 20% off coupon on that course. So that's something that can help you as well. So with off the rack, the difficult trade down is you, have, you don't have flexibility in length, in type, in, in color, in fabric options, in width, so that the proportion is properly adjusted to your triple window or your double window or your 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 tight and a half window right the length the width um, and if you need to do something where you have different treatments across the space but you want the same fabric it can get a little bit dicier with off the rack um, semi custom gives you more choice a little higher in price and then of course full custom you'll have a heart attack when you see the the um, uh, the pricing because you're talking about highly skilled labor if you're in the United States highly skilled labor in the US if you're watching me from England highly skilled labor in, in England or wherever you're watching from highly skilled trained craftsperson labor is always going to price out very very differently very differently than um, low skilled labor running running stuff through a machine in a factory it's just the way of the world different labor market so hopefully that helps you. If you have a question that you'd like to ask about window treatments, I will take those. 
Uh, da, 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 da. And if not, we can, you know, put a pin in it. So, okay. So I'm getting thanks for the pep talk. People are glad I'm talking about window treatments. Um, Kay Kayawana is saying this is her first time watching. So thankful for the opportunity to see you live. I'm so glad you're here too. Truly love it. Um, love this time with you and all my peeps. Uh, Joan is saying it's been a stressful year. Uh, not only just because of the current coronavirus, also she's had three colds. Usually gets through the year with no colds. You know what I started doing, Joan? I don't know if this is helping at all, but I read that um, reader that I am that um, because I talk about you know the gut being part of your immune health, um, that a really good pro probiotic helps to strengthen the immune system. So I've been taking a probiotic. It's been pretty good so far. Not good. We shall see. Um, uh, Elena's saying this, this is, a, this is spring cleaning time. So she's using all of her extra energy around the home. I like it to keep, uh, I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. Any questions? I'm looking to see if there are questions. Joan is saying that the horse that tried to knock me off was, was really very smart. <laughs> that hers are sweet. All right. I'll come ride your horse, Joan. No problem. Okay. So Amy is saying she has, she wants to talk about window treatments. Now, I'm going to take Amy's question or anyone's question as long as I do not, what? Right. Have to see a picture to be able to answer you well. If I have to see a picture to answer you well, I'm not going to take it because I don't want to give you a crappy answer. I want to give you good information, a good answer. All right, Amy says, I have a 10-foot wide picture window in my living room. Uh, well, you, have, you have a DIY Roman shade because you couldn't find the right treatment. It's okay, but wa you want something beautiful. I'm working through my design fingerprint now. All right, Amy. So um, I think eventually the window boss course should happen for you because you sound like an, a motivated DIYer and design is not a dumbed down subject. The DIY machine has so lied to brilliant women like you and made it sound as if design is just this easy, look at a picture, you make it happen. Design is very strategic. It is. There are formulas. There are strategies that you use. And if you ignore them, you're going to throw good money after bad. So Amy, sounds to me like you're in one of my courses already because you're talking about your design fingerprint. So if you're in Decorating Genius System, you can post pictures in uh, the private group so the group can weigh in. And eventually, Window Boss, I think, would be perfect for you. So just take a, take a look at that. Loretta is saying this is a good distraction. I'm so glad, Loretta. Ah, oh, that's good. We need that. I can feel the calming vibes coming back from you guys. Christine is saying that for those of you who, uh, for those of us who can't justify this expensive custom or semi-custom, I get it. How do we identify the best quality ready-mades? Um, great question. What can we do to make ready-mades look custom? Christine, I go into this in really full detail in my window boss course, I even have an expert interview with an installer who installs ready maze in million dollar homes. And Tom has some great stuff for you. Um, so without having the, that available to me to go into with you. So for quality, um, I want you to know that the lowest cost treatment is never ready made is never going to be the best quality treatment. It's you get you don't get something for less. You get something less for less. Manufacturers start to rip out um, weight of fabric. They start to rip out the cut of fabric, the amount of fabric. So your treatment starts to get more and more and more and more uh, anemic looking. I show some side by side comparisons within ready maids in the window boss, and I even show you how to shop for ready maids and what to look for in ready maids. But I need pictures to show you because there are some manufacturers that are selling ready maids that show terrible proportion mistakes in what they're selling. And a smart design consumer, a smart design diva, would look at that and say, uh uh, I don't think so. No how, no way would I put that in my bathroom. There are other ready-made treatments I could put into my bathroom. So what I'm going to say to you right off the bat, Christine, is that you need to learn about proportion because when you understand proportion of treatment, you'll know what you what works in what you're seeing online or in catalog in window treatments that are, that are ready-made. You can do some pretty things with ready-mades, but you have to know proportion. And that's something I need visuals uh, and my little teaching poke, pogo stick there. And I've got to give you some mathematical formula as well. Not hard math. If you can, you know, balance a checkbook, 
if you know if you can add up the calories you ate in a day you can do these you know window treatment things sorry there must have to have been a better analogy than the calories for the day and what can you do to make window treatments look more custom you got a nail proportion right off the bat Christine um, you can do multiple treatments on, on a single rod to help bulk them up, but then there are other things you need to do to them to get that proportion right. So I'm giving you a shorthand and handed answer because this is this uh, these Facebook Live moments, these, these um, conversations, they're better as conversations. They're really not the ideal teaching tool to take you in a deep dive. I can help create more clarity but the true teaching, you need one of my courses or one of my free online workshops, okay? Christine, I hope that helps you. I hope I helped you a little bit there, Christine. Jamie is saying, great tip on the window treatment um, to do that first rather than the bedding if you're working in ready-mades. Good, Jamie. I'm glad that helped you. Janet, great question. Can a window treatment shrink a room? If yes, how to avoid it? Yeah, so Janet, I don't know if you're one of my students in Decorating Genius, but I go into how to use color to manipulate a room. In fact, if any of you wa watch my, my Instagram feed, and if you're not watching my Instagram feed, there it is, at decorating.genius, at decorating.genius. I posted some stories about my daughter's first apartment in New York with some roommates, and it's tiny. It's cute, but it's tiny. We used color in a certain way to make that space look bigger. Anything that has color, I don't care if it's your your sofa, your bedding, your window treatments, anything that has color is broadcasting something into your room. It's either broadcasting a sense of receding and, and making a space look bigger, or it's advancing and making a space look smaller. So very quickly, Janet, you know, if you want a window treatment that's going to make a space look and feel bigger, try to keep your window treatment in close proximity color wise to the wall color see a little bit of that window treatment here in my my office is fairly close to the wall color isn't it that is in order to make this small office feel bigger pushes that window out if that window treatment was done in a dark dark purple boy that would really come into the room differently so Without getting too advanced, without more visual support, um, hopefully, Janet, that will help you. I want you to be really careful about what am I doing with color? What am I broadcasting at that window? And also, if you are trying to make a room look taller, do you want to have a horizontal um, valance mounted on your window casement? Hope you know what the casement is. If not, Window Boss would be a great course for you as well. Um, if you mount above that casement, you will stretch that window, make your room look bigger. So it has to do with what you select, where you hang it, okay, and, and, and what you plan. So hopefully that gets you started. Great, great question though, Janet, thank you. All right, pa Parisa is saying, I need help with accessorizing my rooms. I like the furniture, but I need help bringing them together. Parisa Dahl, I have the best online course for that, OMG. It's called Design CPR. Head to the blog, go to the Learn With Me tab, um, and check out Design CPR, Creating Perfect Rooms. Uh, it, it's all about how to accessorize like a boss, how to reinvent a room just with your window, with, just with your accessories. Sorry, I had window on the brain. Uh, using what you own, doing some shopping if you feel like it. If not, but I put you on an actual plan and path. We plan it out together during the course. And then you go out and you start styling like a design diva, making amazing things happen. And if you like that course, head to the blog right now. There are some coupons current coupons for 20% off any one of my online courses, so that could, could help you as well. My neighbor Estelle is here. Hi, Estelle, you sweetheart. Good to see you. Social distancing, so I'm giving you a hug. Estelle's house is like actually that house right out there or something. There you go. One of those houses across the street. Um, Jane is saying, this is what I do for a living. It's so fun, creative, and we like to think out of the box. I agree with you. Um, final, two. final two questions. Okay, Katie's giving me the final two. Okay, so um, Val is saying, great advice to work with the rest of the room around the ready-made drapes. I spent a month pounding the pavement in New York City looking for a linen in my price point and went with a one-of-a-kind Ushak carpet in my living room. Mm. I couldn't find anything ready-made. Now I have a project instead of a finished room. Um, Val, try, these are not low-cost ready-mades, but try restoration hardware. I think, and some of the custom work rooms that I work with agree, I think that 
in the ready-made world, I think Restoration does some of the better ready-made panels. Um, they are not the lowest cost panels though, I'm just warning you, but I bet you would find a linen with them. They, they, they have a fairly good selection of workhorse basics, velvets, cottons, and linens, so I think you might find something there. So there you go. There was that question, and one more question from Kathy saying, should all window treatments on the main level of a house be the same color? Nope, not necessarily. Big question, gorgeous question. That is a huge question. And so Kathy, you know, you might do really well with my window boss course or decorating genius, because that is a big question and there's way more about design that you need to know. Um, you could do all of this, the same color, but you absolutely do not have to. It's, there's, there are much bigger issues for you to control um, in the design of that may of that first floor, but I love that you're thinking that way. It's a brilliant question. All right, dolls. We went a little over today. I'm so sorry uh, for taking up more of your time. I'm glad we had this time together. Um, next week we had a topic planned for you, and once again, given the moment that we're in right now, I'm not sure if we just should do it. So first thing I'm going to tell you is that if you missed any portion of this Facebook Live, you can find it or any of our Facebook Lives, as well as the other videos we put out for you on YouTube. So head over there and check us out, The Interior Design Advocate. So next week's topic is, and because we get questions about it, so I was going to talk about it. But again, given what's going on in the world right now, didn't know if you'd want to hear from me on any of this stuff. But next week's topic is the answer for a lot of you to the question, should I become an interior designer? What does it take to open a des design practice? What does it take to become a designer and work for another design team? Um, so I, I'm thinking that what I'll do is I'll stick to our plan. You guys seem to like talking about design as a distraction from what's going on in the moment. and. Um, if there's anything I feel I need to say to you about keeping yourselves intact during this tough time, this stressful moment, uh, we'll start out next week the way we did this week, all right? And if I don't have any brilliant ideas to give to you then, I'll just hop into design. How does that sound? Good? All right, lovelies, listen, we've got to, we've got to blow out of here. Thank you so much for coming here and being with me every Tuesday, 4 p.m. I love having you in my life, and I love being in your life. You are brilliant women. You are creative and sensitive and marvelous uh, women. I love being part of your life. I love helping you to create more peace and beauty in your home and therefore in your life through the power of design. And that's why I'm glad we're able to connect today to talk about how to support you in being strong through this, through this time, this difficult cycle. And I remind you once again, all cycles, all cycles eventually come to an end. Maybe not as soon as you want them to, but they do. So stay strong out there, lovelies, and stay healthy. Sending you all a lot of love and a big hug, all of you. Okay, take care, guys. See you next time. Hi, this is Donna. Thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and comment below so I know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to the Interior Design Advocates channel so you don't miss any of our great content.